All right, we are talking about differences, difference equations in this series of videos, and we're kind of building our way up to being able to solve a difference equation for a very general case. Before we do that and start working in that direction, though, let's just talk about another approach to solving a difference equation. It's what I call an iterative approach to solving a difference equation. This is something that you can do by hand, one value at a time. That's useful often because sometimes you need to get just a value or two to solve for initial conditions. This is also something that you can do, you know, using MATLAB or a computer. If you just need to kind of solve to get your vector of values for just, you know, a thousand or ten thousand values, that's something that you can easily do in MATLAB with a for loop. Um, it's not great if you want to know the equation. You know, this approach does not give you an equation as a solution, but it does let you easily get um, as many values as you want of the solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example difference equation and solve it iteratively one value at a time. So here is the difference equation that we're going to work with. This is our difference equation that describes in the time domain the relationship between the input f of the system and the output y of the system. So there's our difference equation. And we're told some initial conditions. And since this is a second order system, right, there's a plus two right here. Since this is a second order system, I need to have two initial conditions to uh, be able to solve this difference equation. So these are my initial conditions of the system. It tells me kind of my kind of starting point. And we are going to solve this difference equation for the specific case of the input being k u of k. So k u of k is off for all time k less than zero. And then at time zero, the unit step turns on. And then we have a linear kind of ramp k increasing. So zero, one, two, three, four over time. All right, so one thing I like to do is since I'm going to solve this equation for y of k, I kind of like to isolate one of these y's on the left side of the equation. So this term right here and this term right here, I'm going to move to the other side of the equation and write my difference equation like this. So I've moved two of those y terms to the other side. The reason I've moved these two y terms is, be, you'll see here, is because those are going to be kind of behind me in time. So as I plug in a particular value for k, I'm going to be able to use my initial conditions in this difference equation. So let's take a look at that. Now that I have this kind of written y of k plus 2 equals all of this stuff over here on the right, let's pick a particular value for k. The first value I'm going to choose is the first value that I don't know. I already know y of minus 2 and y of minus 1. I really need y of 0. So to get a 0 right here, I need k to equal negative 2. A negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So if I let k equals negative 2, I actually have y of 0. And then right here, I'm going to have negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. So that's y of negative 1. Here, if I replace that with um, k equals negative 2, I have y of negative 2. And then just continue going, replacing all the k's with negative 2. I get this right here. So now you can see why I chose this particular value for k and why these two terms were the ones that I moved to the right side, because now I can see my initial conditions that were provided in the problem. So y of minus 1 was equal to 1, and y of minus 2 was equal to 2. What about my inputs? My input at time 0 is actually equal to 0, because when k is 0, I get a 0 right here. And then also, when k is negative 1, I get the unit step function evaluated at that time is 0. So I actually get a 3 times 0 here as well. So if you simplify that, we get 1 minus 0 0.6 plus 0 plus 0, and that is equal to 0.4. So now I know one more value in my signal, y of k. I know the value at time 0. All right, let's do another one. Let's pick another time. The next time I'm going to pick is k of minus 1, because if I replace k of minus 1 here, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and I can solve for my signal at time 1. So y of 1 is equal to, so we're replacing everything with k equals negative 1. So replace that k and that k and that k and that k with negative 1. If you do that, we will get y of 0 minus 0.3y of minus 1 plus f of 1 minus 3 times f of 0. So you can see what ha is happening here. 
the value that I just previously computed, y of 0, is right here. So that's why we call it iterative. Every new value that I compute, in this case, I'm trying to compute the new value y of 1, depends on the previous values I've already computed. So let's go ahead and plug in y of 0 was 0.4, minus 0.3, y of minus 1 was equal to 1, plus, so here's things get a little bit more interesting now, because finally I have some non-zero values for my input, f at time 1. If I look at my equation and replace the uh, k with 1, 1 times the unit step of 1, the unit step at time 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. So I get a 1 there, but this is still 0 because the unit step at time 0 is still 0. So if we simplify this a little, minus 4, or I'm sorry, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 plus 1 is 1.1. So now we've computed our second value. I started off knowing my two initial conditions, and I've now computed the value of the signal at time point, at, at time uh, minus 2 was equal to 0.4, and at time minus 1 was equal to 1.1. Obviously, there's an infinite number of values I still need to compute. I need to compute it for uh, y, of zero, y of 2 and y of 3 and y of 4 and keep on going. So this isn't something that you could do, this approach, to solve for all time. But like I said, it is kind of a handy approach. If you need just a value or two, this is a very useful thing to do. Also, kind of in MATLAB, if you were going to code this up, you could easily compute, you know, thousands or millions of points in a for loop very quickly. So it's still a very practical um, technique to solving a difference equation. All right, that's it for now. We'll move on to kind of some of our next cases. In the next video, we're going to slowly build up to solving difference equations in our subsequent videos.